Hello everyone, it's Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're going to be looking at a Zoroark Lycanroc Weavile uh, deck list. I think this is a deck that is slowly gaining a bit more popularity as this meta moves forward. Weavile being able to capitalize on a lot of these uh, ability-based decks, lots of uh, Ninetales Stage 2 decks roaming around, uh, Gardevoir, Decidueye, uh, Zoroark Mirror Matches, you're pretty much going to have a good time there because you have both Lycanroc and Weavile. So it feels like a pretty um, powerful archetype that is obviously stage one based, so a little bit less high rolly than some of the other Zoro builds out there right now. So it feels like a fairly safe play that you can go for in the format. Really only your auto losses, in my list at least, come in the form of Mill and probably Buzzwall. Um, and those aren't the two worst losses to take. Obviously Buzzwall is in this weird spot where... Doesn't really want to face too many Blacephalons, doesn't want to face Lost March or Gramble too much either. So I feel like it should be declining in play, but as long as there's Zoroark, people will play the deck. So it's kind of a brave decision to play Zoroark that has no real answer to um, the Buzzwell archetype, but I can talk about text that you might want to play later on. So let's have a look at my 60 cards. First of all, 4 4 Zoroark GX line, main attacker, main trader to get us more cards. Trickster is an option in this list because we are playing unit energies as our uh, backup energy outside of double colorless. And we also play multi-switch. So do bear in mind Trickster being able to copy some key attacks in the game right now can help us get additional one-hit KOs out of nowhere against people. From there, a 2-2 line of Lycanroc GX. Going for the corner Rock Rough, it has 60 hit points and we're playing an Elm engine in this build. So that's always nice. You could also think about running the Tackle promo Rockruff if you want to. Uh, that can be nice if you're expecting even more Zoro mirror matches. Um, obviously you don't really want to be doing something like a Kukui tackle attack, but in random spots it can help you um, take early prizes. Two Lycanroc GX, Bloodthirsty Eyes, obviously incredible, allowing you to pick off extra targets on your opponent's side of the field. One of the reasons why this deck is so strong is that its turn two is so ridiculously powerful, especially against other evolving decks. You can target their draw engines in the form of mudkips, you can target their lone basics that they have waiting on the bench, and this is all thanks to this Lycanroc. Once you start evolving into your Zoroark, so you can then use like a big Cynthia, find yourself Lycanroc and get going. You're allowed to develop your own board really well whilst also getting Gust at the end of your turn, which is absolutely excellent for you. Dangerous Rogue offers a fantastic GX attack for us as well for a big one-hit knockout. It does 50 for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. We are playing Choice Bank Kukui, and we also have Counter Gain in here as well, so we can now, from... A Lycanroc having no energy attached to it, get a Dangerous Rogue out of nowhere as long as we start going behind, which is sometimes the case when we go second. Claw Slash is also something to uh, bear in mind, especially against Zorark Mirror Matches. For that fighting DC, Claw Slash doing 110, double it, you kill a Zorark. Happy days. Um, we, again, are playing Kikui Choice Band, but we're not playing the Diancie in here, so we can't make those Claw Slashes too out of control. Uh, from there, a 1-1 one, one line of Weavile. In addition to the little ditto in there, we have some threatening evil uh, uh, admonitions. <laughs> no one knows how to say that word. Uh, and you do 50 for each of your opponent's Pokemon that has an ability in play. Kind of anti-synergistic because people will see a Lycanroc piece and feel like they don't want to overbench stuff. And that sort of is also bad for your Weavile. But there's just so many abilities in the format right now that keeping those in check is going to be really nice against the opponent, forcing them in random spots to have, you know, half-baked setups by not going all in on their main ability Pokemon can sometimes be good, or you can simply let them get fully set up and punish them with big one-hit KO, uh, KOs, so really pa powerful stuff here. One Ditto Prism Star, very strong for getting, uh, you know, a fifth Zerua, an extra Weavile, or an extra Rockruff, always very, very good to get this guy out. We also are playing one Alolan Muck. This has the Power of Alchemy ability, each basic in play, hand, and in their discard has no abilities. This is obviously a very good tech card for Lost March, which is very reliant on Oranguru to keep recycling their hand to make sure they can keep attacking, and also very powerful against Gramble, which is also very reliant on Oranguru. Two matchups that without this muck are probably going to be pretty awkward, so I think it's worth the tech slot. Three copies of Tapu Lele GX. I really like playing a high count of Lele for that early wonder tag to get ourselves Elm. We're also playing a Great Ball engine, so just having more physical Pokemon is oftentimes good for those outs. And we're really trying to have a high chance of getting Elm turn 1 because it gets Zoroark decks going so efficiently. And Energy Drive, always an option when you play DCEs. 
Onto the items, we're going to play one copy of Max Potion for some extra healing. Um, one copy of Palpad to recycle some of our supporters. You'll notice we have a lot of two counts of supporters in this deck. So recycling the most important ones for the matchup is going to be crucial. One copy of Multi-Switch. I've mentioned how it can be very good for getting a Trickster out of nowhere. It also can be used for getting a Dangerous Rogue out of nowhere. So we have lots of potential burst in this list. Always a nice one-off to have alongside things like Mallow in our deck. Um, then we have one copy of Rescue Stretcher. I kind of get away with having a cheeky line of Weavile. Um, but thanks to this Rescue Stretcher, also very good for just trading stuff away and using like a Lele Lay 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 game or something like that. Versatile card. I'm playing four copies of Great Ball in my list. I've really had a look at some of the most recent Zoro Rocks. A lot of them are playing Timer Balls. Um, I like playing Great Ball just for, again, those early Lele outs to get Elm. Uh, you have very strong outs with four Elm, four Great Ball, four Ultra Ball, and three Tapu Lele. You have really, really good shot of getting Elm going, uh, which is obviously amazing for you. And these Great Balls then turn into ways to try and help you find Zoroarks after that. Timer Ball, a lot less versatile. Um, they're just on those coin flips as well, which is always, you know, not that great. I always like to think of Great Ball as trying to sycamore for a Pokemon, and when you think about it that way, when you play four copies of a Zoroark, and it's not in your opening, like seven cards, and then you go for a Great Ball, it's like missing from a 14 card dig. It doesn't feel good. It can happen, of course, uh, but it's never that bad. And even in those rare spots where you do miss Elm, uh, you still have Great Balls which can, which can get you basics. So if you've had an absolutely dead hand, if it was a Timer Ball, it would just be even worse. If it's a Great Ball before something like a Cynthia, you can at least try and get an extra basic on your board. So I think the versatility of Great Ball sort of trumps Timer Ball right now. Uh, four copies of Ultra, obviously excellent for getting Lele's and Zoro's and all your tech cards as well. Uh, two copies of Devoured Field, increasing your damage output, making that Weavile that much more threatening is always going to be great for you. Also, in combination with Kakui and Choice Band, this guy helps push Zorark to 180, which is good against things like Bacephalon and a few other basic GX Pokemon out there as well. It also improves your Weavile math, which is really cool. Um, also important for just bouncing other people's stadium cards in general. One of the cards I really do want in this list, to be perfectly honest, is a third copy. Uh, if you did run a Time Ball engine, I know a lot of people play three timers, no Great Balls, and then you can just add in the extra stadium, so... If you're less triggered by a timer ball than I am, you can go for that approach if you want to. Uh, one copy of Mallow, I think it's just incredible in all Zoro decks that I play, uh, especially decks, uh, a deck like this where you have some crucial one-offs like hitting multi-switch or counter game at the right times, getting your DCs up and rolling early, and even at times you can go like Mallow for a combination of things, including a Lycan Rock, which gets you an extra Guzma effectively as well. So that's really, really nice for you. Two ofs of lots of different supporter cards. I like the versatility of Zora Rock right now. Uh, a couple copies of Judge, very strong in the metagame because there are so many decks attempting to use things like Ninetales and get themselves into big stage two boards with lots of Swamperts and all sorts of other things right now. So trying to judge them early is going to be nice for hurting them get either an Elm turn one or a uh, beacon into everything they need next turn. You can judge those away, which is very nice. I'm only playing two copies of Cynthia because I want to have those two copies of Judge in here. I feel like Mallow is oftentimes stronger. Cynthia as a two count is fine. I feel like you don't need to have necessarily that many more um, because once your Zoras are up and rolling, you don't necessarily need that refresh too much. But I still think it's nice to Lele for it on something like turn two if we have to. Um, two copies of Acerola for that jumping around and healing off damage. Two copies of Guzma alongside the double Lycanroc and Palpad I think is plenty. And two copies of Kakui, so nice for math fixing and making sure that we can reach one hit KOs. And the big four of is going to be Professor Elm's Lecture, because it's so important for Zoroark decks to get rolling. It gets all of our basics into play. Obviously, we're playing with 60 hit points, Sneasel, Rockruff, and Zorua, as well as Ditto, which is absolutely excellent for us. Three copies of Choice Band. Again, this is one of the most aggressive Zoroark decks out there. And Choice Band ramping that damage is going to be important to make sure that we can get as many one-hit KOs as possible. Oftentimes really vital on things like Weavile to reach uh, key numbers. One counter gain, although we are an aggressive sort of stage one base build of Zoroark, if we happen to go second a lot of the time, our opponent will knock out a just 60-hit point Pokemon that's been in the active. Counter gain can punish that heavily by allowing you to go straight into something like a Lycanroc GX and responding with a big dangerous rogue if you really have to which is absolutely incredible for you and can really set the opponent back. Very, very strong card for this deck. Uh, it really helps out if you've happened to whiff energy attachments on turn one. That was always a 
a crucial sort of factor in Zora Rocks. Uh, a lot of the time people played like nine energy cards just to try and have that slightly increased chance of getting an energy on a rock rough turn one. Well, this is a much easier mitigating factor for having to hit that. Finally, for DCE, great for Leles and Zoroarks, and for unit energies to use the dark part for your evil ad uh, admonitions, and the fighting part for your Zoro, uh, sorry, your Rockruff and your Lycanroc, as well as the Zoroark Trickster, so do bear that in mind. Uh, a few cards that have been in other lists recently is going to be the Giratina, actually, that we see a lot of the time in Malamar decks, with that Distortion Door ability allowing you to pull it from your discard pile straight to the bench and put one counter on two of your opponent's Pokemon. This can help you actually get around B-string sometimes in really cute situations, uh, but also allows you to sort of preemptively set up some nice math for you. I think the main reason why I don't like the Giratina in the list is that it's a bench space that isn't a Zoroark and doesn't draw you cards. Uh, so that's why I don't really like it in here, but I know that this is cute math fixing and allows you to do some pretty intricate plays. So I don't mind it as a one-of in the deck. Uh, the other Rockroff is always up for the debate, the one that can tackle, I've already mentioned it in the video, but I may as well show it off as well. Naganadel was actually, uh, I've traded away my other ones to my friend to test the Cephalon. Um, this non-GX Naga has also popped up in one of the Roanoke lists, um, allowing you to get basic energies back. Obviously the build would have to change, you'd go to basic fightings, uh, but the idea is you have a helpful attacker against uh, Buzzwall decks, and this is something worth noting because Buzzwall is obviously a difficult matchup for this deck. Um, with that simple choice band, you can get one Hikaios on them, and in other matchups in general, uh, you can sometimes on that three prize turn do a big 190 with a choice band, or even go to 210 with Kukui against everything that's not Zoroark because they have resistance to you. So, not a bad attacker at all. Uh, as we've seen so often in Bacephalon, this guy will start getting in there and start swinging on crucial turns and it could do the same in this deck you don't even need the poipole just play the ditto and the naga is a nice card for you for the buzzwell matchup if you want to further stage one cards you could consider always got to keep an eye out for mad cargo if you want to have that smooth over available to you you could play the lone mad cargo and there's always the threat of mill uh, let's talk about adding in resource management if we want to. A resource management will oftentimes allow you to tie unless they're playing unknown hand. So why don't we play our own unknown hand, draw more cards than them at a faster rate, use a Rangaroo as much as possible to recycle our hand, and eventually use a rainbow energy, attach it to our Rangaroo, Acer it up, and unknown hand them for the win. Um, it could be a hilarious win condition for you in unknown hand stall mirror matches. If you want to commit those two slots, you can. I'm not doing it because I always like to show you simple baselines of lists, um, but that could be a hilarious way that you beat Mill, um, so do bear that in mind. In terms of uh, item cards and other things you could be trying out, I know the Lily Nest Ball engine was played in the um, Champions League event in Japan for the winning Zora Rock list, so you might want to go down that line with Lily and Nest Balls. I've already mentioned Timer Ball and how I, ugh, this card just gives me a headache. Um, post-traumatic stress disorder after looking at timer ball but yeah i mean if you want to play timers over great balls and allow yourself to have one or two extra spaces you can do that another one of item card you could consider is enhanced hammer uh good for mirror matches good at getting rid of a super boost here and there and uh that could be worthwhile as well so do bear that in mind also really good against buzz rock again for getting rid of a beast energy that they oftentimes lissia out these days so that could be again another card that could improve those matchups so Definitely worth considering. Let's jump into the ladder now and see what we come up against. Um, I feel like this deck, like I said, at the moment I'm not tech for mill, so we probably lose that. And we don't want to see Buzzwell. That's probably the only other thing that we don't want to look at. I think we have reasonable chances of beating the rest of the format, especially uh, using Judge to disrupt some of these decks that can build bigger and scarier boards against us. And speak of the devil, Judge is already in our hand. We have a nice Elm DCE already. Looking pretty good here. Going second, though. Ooh, we're up against a spread deck. So we do play... Um, oh, wow, they have nothing. We do play Acerola, Palpad, and double... Um, sorry, 
Double Ace Serena, Power Pad, and Max Potion. We have prized Max Pot. We've prized a stadium as well, which hurts. Oh, no, we've drew a stadium. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, and at least we have Double Ace Serena, Power Pad. Do we want to put Ditto down immediately to simply evolve it straight up? Because we are going to be a little concerned about if ever we can put this down otherwise. It's versatile. Uh, I feel like I will put it down now before he gets all those flying flips in. The Ditto will probably be the first thing we try and evolve up. Now we do want to get attacking turn two. Don't really want to commit a DC to the active for a Fury Swipes play. If we got three heads, actually if we got two heads if I played Devoured Field first, which we don't want to do, we could get a relevant damage in. <laughs> but I think I'll just commit energy to the bench and pass. Obviously hold Stadium for uh, Bouncing Shrine. Going to be important. They now find themselves a Pokemon Fan Club. It's going to get them probably something like Sneasel plus Coco. Unless it's a Persimian list. If it's Persimian, I'd be more, I'd be surprised that they play Fan Club. It's normally Lily Nest Ball. Oh, it's Mill. Well, this isn't going to go well, guys. I've got, a, I've got a secret to tell you. We have no text for Mill. They do flip Tails. And bench a Hooper. Uh-oh. Well, let's try and judge them. Really, our only win con is judge them into nothing. Having to waste an energy to retreat feels good, man. Let's put another one of these down. Right, speeding. Now that we know he's not mill, we can, oh sorry, spread, we can uh, leave the ditto open. Got themselves E-Hammer, let's see what else they got. Shrine, Nest Ball, okay, this is not good. Got themselves a little Whelm. Anna Stevens, that's the best judge I've ever given anyone of all time, pretty sure. I've checked, yeah, it is. So I feel like the judge plan we basically have to judge this turn if we ever want to win. Uh, let's get rid of this. He'll always out Stadium us because he has Lusamine. Alright, let's see if the second judge does the trick. We're two of our three DC, or two of our four DC is down already. There's our Aloha Muck. Don't want to put it into play just yet. So I kind of want him just to promote the Hooper. Let's see how he does off judge number two. There's Hooper. Lucimine gets Stadium Steven. It's pretty slow though. He probably should have got Fan Club. I need to check what attack Well Lord has quickly to see if it's worth me trying to trickster. I'm literally going to do a live search <laughs> and see what a Well Lord does. How much damage Well Lord does. It does 200 minus 40 for each counter on this Pokemon. Okay. Uh, well, we've got rid of a lot of, uh, lot of things. I think I kind of want to save Kikui. Uh, okay, let's Kikui this turn. And we want to start getting back into our judges. Hmm. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> Mallow's not really good for us right now. We only want Judge. Okay, let's see what he can do. He got himself Steven instead of a uh, instead of a fan club, which is pretty risky. Stretcher, okay. Maybe that's why. Hmm. Guzma. But he benched something. He should not have benched anything. If he was going to Guzma, he should not have benched anything. We got Judge as well. I don't want to play Judge just yet. I want him to use I want him to use Stevens. See what else he's doing. He pretty much could have just trapped us by literally just doing the Guzma play on Muck and not benching. Kind of YOLO, I guess. Okay, they have Cynthia. Let's see what this brings. An Onyx. More bench Pokemon for us. Just a pass. So no hammers or anything like that, which is really good. I think we're just judging. I feel like counter gain is not the best card here. Lycan rock not gonna work. Never gonna have enough energy on the board. Helms lecture. How much does this do? Just kidding. <laughs> uh, do I want to commit energy elsewhere or just keep going to the active? Just keep going. Keep him going. Now I need to search Steelix's second attack. I know it can tackle. What's its second attack do? It's probably a load of energies as well. Time for a second search of the day. Steelix. 80, flip a coin, 40 more, okay. So we're probably not trickstering anything. Uh oh. Yep, yep, that was again, a really bad judge. Yep, yep, yep. I think he's probably got us. Eventually. Well, good luck us, I guess. If the Steelix comes down and stuff, I think we just gotta scoop it. Scoop it up. Don't wanna waste any more of your time. It is fun that we can have a win condition without having any real win condition against him. Actually benched an Onyx. Stevens Resolve. What does he get here? So 
It's probably just a load of hammers, right? It's probably just like Steelix Hammer Hammer. I think we can beat that. <clears throat> we'll see, though. If it's me, I'm going for Steelix and some hammers here. Gladian? What's he prized? Is he prized the Steelix or something? We have multi switch if he does lots of hammering. Alright, now we need to find our last judge. And hope that we can. Oh, okay. Wait, this is the one that was, does 170. So he is 210 right now. We can do 170, 180, 190. That's hilarious. Do I trickster now? I think I do while I still can. I still don't have options in our hand. We're basically all in. Ugh. No, that's just beating. We're close. <laughs> Maybe. He's played no heals yet, though. Can't All of his Acer Rollers don't work, because he needs to put down a basic. So it has to be exactly Max Potion. Yep, we got him. Wow. Pretty insane. Techless. Fearless. Judge got us there. Nice. Thank you, Judge. You absolute beast. Pog champ. Alright, let's get into a hopefully real game. <laughs> let's let's keep going. Already justified the two copies of Judge. Didn't think it would be in a matchup like that though. We're up against Ultra Squids now. Being Lady with a DC isn't bad if we can start smacking, especially if it's an Ultra and a Crosma in the front. We have an Elm, which we're always happy to see with a Zoroark and a potential Ultra Wall for another Lele if we needed to, or another Zoro. Looking good, looking good. I found that funny that I had to live search Werelord and Steelix attacks. If he played the other Steelix, the other Steelix has more hit points as well. I wonder why he plays that Steelix. Maybe he just doesn't know. Oh well. I didn't have to GX attack on the last turn anyway, so. And if it was just the other Steelix, we would have simply had to Kukui. Right, let's see what they're up to. Ultra and a, Ultra and Mally. They got themselves Ultra Ball. Got rid of Copycat. So it might just be the top 8 list. 
Pretty sure I played one copycat. I'm going to acrobike after searching for Inke, which is pretty weird because I think he would have wanted to find more Inkes. Just decided to concede, which is, I don't know what's going on there, but sure. He chose to get rid of a copycat, so why would he? Huh. <laughs> we just won with a lone Lele. Too much pressure for him. Let's see what else is on the ladder these days. Talented Pika Puff. Lots of different types going on in his list. We get to go first, which is nice. Always want to go first. Uh oh. This is an unlikely hand. This is where you look at the two judge and you wish one was a Cynthia. We're all in. <laughs> One of our three Lele, Elms, Ultra Balls. I'll even take a Great Ball off the top. Clocks. Please. Well. We did it. Get that elm rolling. Hmm. Boswell easily, easily our hardest matchup. We've also prized to Zeru, which does not help matters. I think we just attach the rock rough. It's going to be a big judge. We drop a prize judge and hope that we can GX him. I guess, depending on how many be uh, bench Pokemon he puts down. Maybe we can't even do that. If he doesn't bench too much, do we have to unit counter as a Rua here? Maybe we do. And go for a beating turn two. A fearless Riotus beating. So they get Diancy down. Not much else, which is nice. They are going to put 30 on the Rock Rough. So we're going to go Zerua here. Rip a Zoroark off the top. Fearless play from us. We get into Lycanroc as well, which is nice. We're trading first. Am I using Brooklet here? Just thinking if I want to have another Pokemon that has 60 hit points on our board. I think I do, because the only other thing is going to be a Ditto that comes down, other than Lele, possibly next turn. Trade away the Weavile. So we could Ultra Ball away, Elm Band, get ourselves Lele for a supporter next turn, and then we can Lycanroc KO Diancy. Are we more concerned about a Rock Ruff or a Diancy here? It's really close because the Rock Ruff means you can just Grinch another Zerua. I'm not too happy about that. I think it's got to be the Rock Ruff and just hope that he doesn't play Lysia, I guess. For like, we're always ultra balling for the Lele though. I think that's for sure. I think I'm always replacing Stadium as well. Don't want him to get a free baby buzz down. We'll always do this. And I think I'm always just taking draw here rather than something cheeky like an Acerola. We still have Max Potion in the deck, so... 
I think I want the rock rough just to protect Azura in the back more than anything else. Close there though. Answers on a postcard what you would do there. Great Ball's not a bad pickup for next turn. I guess we'll know if he just goes Choice Band, Beast Energy, lol. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Eyes widen. I don't mind trading the muck away just straight away. Even though we're synthuring. So the real shame about counter gain is that you can't pay retreat with it. Do we want to go to four prizes against him? I think it's our best move rather than just attach smack. So you can go this, this. I think we always have to evolve, it's just whether I'm doing this. His hand is so like dead that it kind of feels like Ugh, it's close, man. I am gonna do it. How many B-strings has been clogging up your hand then? That's the question. Not that he needs them, but... Well, at least one is the answer. Be a Buzzwall solo. We can't do much about him right now. Nice draw. Getting soloed by a buzz does feel a little bit bad, man. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, we're at one seventy if I use a uh, multi switch. And choice band. It's a big smack at the, at the very worst of times. Let's see how those prizes treated him. He wasn't doing much before he took the prizes. Another big daddy buzz. That's going to get B stringed, I imagine. 
Yep. Okay, down to just the single prize. I only use this like rock because I want a max potion active and multi switch to it. So it's safer. We don't just die to a B string. Oh, sorry, a B string. What am I on about? A choice band. Pretty sure we have. Oh, we don't have Mallow. Uh-oh. Yikes. Okay. Well, Cynthia's big draws, I guess. Heal this. Multi-switch. Force in time for Guzma. If we find energy, which we do. <clears throat> and do you have Guzma, my friend? That's the question. And it's probably a yes. <laughs> the deck sometimes plays three, sometimes plays four. Hasn't used a lay, lay yet. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we got pretty close because he drew kind of bad. Do you feel kind of weird about knocking out the Diancy? I don't know, probably a mistake. Probably just gonna hit active and he hits. But either way, we're going to, we're letting him be string. It's just maybe the Diancy would have been stuck active on the turn that we did it. Close, let's have one more game. Let's see more up against Grass Psychic. Lightning. I have no idea. Vika Bulu? Surely not. Pretty busted hand. Hmm. What are they playing? Bulbasaur sleeves. Is it going to be a Venusaur deck? <laughs> we'll have to see. That's a Bulu, it looks like. So Lycanroc probably only going to come down if we can knock out a Vika Vault when he's spent all of his energy on a Bulu. But let's at least start like this. Don't really want to commit an attachment to anything. Sounds really bad. So let's pass. I would say having judges good against like Tempest turns, but this looks like a Bulu. So <laughs> let's just hope that they can't get a big Candy Vika Bulu smack straight off the bat. <clears throat> yep, it's Bully Boys. What a dream. I 
That looks suspiciously like a Vika Vault. Oh, it's a Lele. Could be Lele for Volkner though. We have the attachment as well. He's got it all. He's got it all. Unless he doesn't. Oh, he doesn't have it all. Good news. Yet. <laughs> we'll see if Cynthia gets him the juice. Crumbs. Yeah, it's a Vika Vault. He got rid of Netball Grubbin. You know it's Vika Vault. Okay. So. We have a chance to knock this out because he has three abilities in play. We've our banned energy. Um, not really a hand worth judging. We can Ultra Ball. Zoroark. Zoroark gets us Mallow. Mallow gets us Energy Weavile, but not Banned. Is the Weavile the best thing to bring up here? Sorry, the Ditto. Or do we just hope he doesn't have Banned in a three-card hand? The fact the Ultra Ball away Grub in Netball tells me that he held a supporter, though. This is not good. Uh Okay. Let's do it like this. That's not good for us. We need a lot going on here. If we're gonna get the Kakui dream. We need all three pieces. Well, we have the, we have the full bench. We have the Kakui. But what we don't have is the band or stadium. Uh, it looks like we're not going to by the by the looks of things. Counter gain is good, but not better than the cards in our hand. Yeah, that's not that's not how we're gonna win this game. Let's hope that his three card hand does not have good old choice banderunio. Ah <laughs> Okay. We are getting pretty handily battered here. So only Zoroark can play as well. So we can't think of any like cool Mallow plays. Really rough. Guarantee Zoroark. Was it force? He didn't use he didn't use a strong charge. So now he can't Respond, our Zoroark? Oh no, unless he gets second Vika Vault, then he can do whatever he wants. Guarantee Zoro, empty our hand. 
Uh, but I mean, is it enough? I feel like we need to kind of risk. If we miss Zoroark, we could still um, hit a choice band and ram him. We potentially could have burned multi-switch there just to not draw it again. Hey look, we drew it. The prophecy came true. Still absolutely terrible for us. Because now he can respond on this. Otherwise, if this was a big Zoroark, he would have needed to get like second Vika Volt Bulu banned. Now he just has a knockout and goes to two. Now Guzma any time is pretty much game for him. And his hand size is massive. Zara Aura. That could also do good numbers. We haven't used our stretcher yet, so we'll probably bench the Sneasel next turn, Evolve Weavile active. Hope that our one Zoroark that we got off prizes can get us into a supporter or an energy. <clears throat> They're gonna recycle a bunch of energies before doing some strong charging. Feels so bad that we didn't guarantee the knockout with a Zoroark when we missed off a of Cynthia. We had so many ball search cards left though. We'd only played one Great Ball, one Ultra. Should have used this multi-switch. That's the curse. We'll top deck a draw on a uh, Ultra Ball or a Zoroark and feel super punished for what we did. No, but close. Please, energy or supporter, please. Wrong bloom and energy. No. Crumbs. Ah, that sucks. Even this... <laughs> We're gonna try and make it hard for him to retreat and turn off Zara Aura. <laughs> they cut switches, right? Because they just play Zara Aura now. Uh... Okay. Right? <laughs> so Muck is also a Ray tech slash Bulu tech. Delmise. Oh, he's probably got game just by going strong charge attach Guzma. Yeah, well played. Well, that went abysmally. Vika Bulu, still a bad matchup, I guess. They basically just did not miss a beat, and we definitely did. Oh well, it's all good fun. Had to had to try, didn't we? Had to try. So yeah, that's Zoro Rock Weavile. Oh, so sad that we missed a Zoro Arc off of our own Cynthia. Feels bad, man. Oh well, that's the list. Let me know what you guys think about it. And where's this archetype placed right now? Is it gonna do well in Harrogate? Are you guys thinking about it? Is it on the radar? I'd love to hear it all down below. For now though, it has been Joe from Onipoke. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.